Hey guys, my name is Minas, and today we're going to be talking about the embryological development of the GIT, namely the hindgut. So that's the distal third of the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid, the rectum, and the anal canal. And as usual, I've broken it down to make it so that if anyone that is new to embryology should understand how the hindgut develops. And I also recommend that you watch the two previous gastrointestinal tract development videos so that you can get a good overall picture of GIT embryology. And let's begin at the beginning at the blastula. So the blastula is a ball of cells that's a product of fertilization where the sperm fertilizes the egg. This ball of cells travels down the uterine tube into the uterine canal and a process of gastrulation, once it implants into the uterine wall, will form these three germ layers. The ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. And this is an oversimplification for this, which is a cross section of those three germ layers, looking at it down. We have the ectoderm, which will be CNS and skin. The mesoderm, which has three parts, the paraxial mesoderm, which are somites or muscles, intermediate mesoderm, which are gonads and kidneys, and lateral plate mesoderm. There are two lateral plate mesoderm. The higher one, in this case, is the somatic or the parietal mesoderm. And the lower one, that's the splanchnic or the visceral. And this kind of gives a hint as to what they'll become. So the parietal mesoderm will give rise to the parietal peritoneum and also the visceral mesoderm will give rise to the visceral peritoneum. And this is perfectly explained right in this uh, complex looking drawing. But again, this is being an earlier snapshot in time when we cut the fetus or the sorry, the embryo and looking at it down. This is in between week three and week four. So again, we've cut it and looking at it this way. And we've seen that some folding has occurred. These are color coders so that we can see that the ectoderm or the future skin is here. And this is your CNS. So we've seen that the neural tube has actually pinched off the ectoderm and formed its own tube inside the fetus or the embryo. And at the same time as, as that happening, we have the GIT or the gut tube being formed from the endoderm. And we've mentioned already how we have parietal mesoderm here and visceral mesoderm covering the GIT, future parietal and visceral peritoneum. Okay, we have the yolk sac here and it's in connection with the mid gut at, uh, through a duct called the vitellin duct. And we have the amniotic sac over here. Okay, so this week three to week four, similarly with this section here, a cross section this way, looking at it like this, and this is at week three to week four. So we can see here the liver bud that's connected to the foregut. The foregut and midgut meet at the entrance of the bile duct into the duodenum. And if you've watched the second embryology video of the GIT, you'll know that the vitellin duct is in direct communication with the midgut. And so this one is color coded here. So we have mesoderm or the aorta in red. The aorta is, give, is from mesoderm. The ectoderm, or this is the neural tube, but in black here, that's still ectoderm. So that's, that would be your, your future skin. And so um, the terminal end of, so in green, if we have the endoderm or the GIT, the terminal end, that's called the cloaca. And the cloaca actually gives rise not just to GIT components, but also to urogenital components, which we will go through. The hindgut is in communication with the allantois as well, through the cloaca. Okay, in thick black over here, we have the urorectal septum. And this black here, that's all mesoderm. So the urorectal septum is derived from mesodermal tissue. And what happens is that this urorectal septum, this mesoderm, will actually partition the cloaca, which means it'll divide the cloaca into anterior and posterior parts. So it'll divide it into a front part and a back part. And over here at the cloaca, we have a cloacal membrane over here. All right, so now let's go through the development of this hindgut. So in week four, 
week six, week seven. We'll see over here, which is around about this time, this urorectal septum, which is from mesoderm. The cloacal membrane, that's the boundary between endoderm and ectoderm. So like we said, this black would be ectoderm, and this membrane is pretty much separating the endoderm to ectoderm. And we have the cloaca here. The cloaca not only communicates with the allantois and the hindgut, but on its lateral sides, on its sides, it has the mesonephric ducts. So your kidneys during this time, it'll have its own kidney filtration at this time from its lateral sides, but are not drawn in. Okay, so if we move on to week six, we'll know, we'll see that this urorectal septum grows down, splitting the cloaca into a primitive urogenital sinus and a rectal, anorectal canal. This is the cloacal duct that communicates both anterior and posterior portions. And this area right near the um, cloacal membrane, that's called the proctoduum. The mouth was the stomaduum. The anal part is the proctoduum. Okay, and then in week seven, we'll see that actually this urorectal septum will fuse with the external ectoderm, forming a perineal body. And we'll notice that this genital tubercle, where this was here, as this grows down, it pulls it down with it. And so with this fusion, the uro urogenital membrane and the anal membrane will eventually open up, forming the canals. So the urogenital membrane and anal membrane are from the cloacal membrane. So the urogenital membrane and the anal membrane are from this component right here. So this grows down, splitting the cloaca into two separate components now. Okay, so by the end of week seven, we would actually have a separate bladder, a urine, urinary system to the colon. And the anorectal canal is posterior to the bladder and the urogenital system. And so the tip of the urorectal septum will be the per perineal body, the outside of which is ectoderm, the inside of which is endoderm and the epithelial cells are, sorry, the inside is mesoderm and the epithelial cells are endoderm. Okay, so the anal pit right around here on the inside is ectoderm. So the external one third of the anal canal is stratified squamous cells from ectoderm and the uh, two, upper two thirds, that is columnar cells because they come from endoderm. And the portion, the junction between that third and the two thirds, that's called the pectinate line. So now let's talk about the blood supply. It's very important to know that hindgut is supplied by inferior mesenteric artery. But in terms of the anal canal, since the upper two thirds is from endoderm, the upper two thirds will get its blood supply of the anal canal, would get its blood supply from the superior rectal arteries, which are branches off the inferior mesenteric artery. But the lower third, the lower third of the anal canal, that since it's ectoderm, it will get its blood from the inferior rectal arteries, which are from the pudendal arteries, from the internal iliac arteries. And so this is essentially all that there is to embryology of the hindgut. I hope this helps and that you fully understand it. If not, contact me on Facebook or leave a comment and I'll be glad to help you guys out. Thanks for watching.